Hi everybody, welcome to Liberty Park Music for another Piano Etudes lesson. Today's lesson is neat because we're going to be looking at a fairly easy etude that's presenting us with an opportunity to work on a technique that every pianist should strive to master at some point. Now what we're going to see in this piece is a clear, simple right hand over an Alberti-style bass accompaniment in the left hand. Now, while knowing what an Alberti bass is and how to play it is indeed important, it's one of the most common styles of left-hand accompaniment that we have while playing the piano, it is not actually the technique to which I am referring. Now what is it already? Let's get into the lesson to find out. So, seemingly a little longer of a piece, but hopefully you notice that we have some pretty significant repetition action happening. We have three very identifiable sections as part of this ABA form. Our first section spans from measure 1 to measure 8, and is conveniently delineated from the next section by those two thin bar lines there. This is a very common way of indicating section changes, though do be aware that it's not really a formal device, it's more of just kind of whenever the composer decides to be nice enough to put it in for the performer. Our second section goes from measures 9 and 16, and the content of measure 16 makes it very clear that we are shifting again. And where we shift back to is in fact a copy and paste repetition of the first A section, now going from measure 17 to measure 24. So those are the three sections. A little harder to see in terms of the repetitions due to the consistency of the texture, but definitely very much so there, and very much so worth noticing and taking advantage of for our learning. Speaking of that consistent texture, it really is valuable to briefly focus on just how consistent that texture is, because you can really see it here in the score view. You can really see that constant motion in the bass um, with very few breaks and the very open, airy space between the melodic content in the treble. In other pieces, you'll often see breaks or alterations in the action where different gestures or sections are really mixing up that musical texture. Not so much here. This looks much more like those single gesture etudes we see that use one kind of figure throughout. But in this piece, obviously, we have a clearly separate melody and accompaniment. Okay. Lastly, let's just point out our preliminary info from the beginning of the piece. This is in 4-4 with a tempo marking of moderato and an initial dynamic of piano. Notice that we have very few dynamic markings throughout, just this one at the beginning, a twin to it when the A section comes back at measure 17, and a little diminuendo hairpin leading up to that. But otherwise, that's it. This piece does have a kind of natural crescendo to it, built into the B section, but it's pretty subtle, and we'll just briefly talk about it when we get there. Okay, let's get into the details. I'm sure you're dying to hear about that important technique I mentioned in the intro to the lesson. So, as I mentioned, the Alberti bass is one of the most common styles of accompaniment that we play at the piano. It is particularly common in the music of the classical and early Romantic eras. It's named after the Italian musician Domenico Alberti, um, though he certainly wasn't the first or the most famous to use it. Now, most people today will recognize it as the left-hand material from the first movement of Mozart's iconic piano sonata in C major, K545.
Now, the key traits of the Alberti bass are that it generally occurs within the span of the hand, meaning that we don't have any crosses or leaps like you so commonly see in the accompaniment of, say, Chopin. Um, and it's usually, though not always, a consistent pattern. Here you can see a couple of different varieties of it. Take note of the different shapes, but also notice that they all start with a low bass note and then are built from there. This is a very common characteristic of the Alberti bass. Now, looking at the first measures of our piece, you can see that we have a simple up and down pattern starting with a basic C position, moving to a second position, which is actually a segment of a G7 chord, but don't worry about that. And then we go right back to the C position, so like this. Now, really try not to use too much finger motion with these. This is going to be very important for executing that elusive, important technique I keep mentioning. What we want is more of a wrist rotation, keeping your fingers very close to, if not outright glued, to the keys. Hopefully you can really see that I'm not doing this. I'm keeping everything nice and tight and still. fingers right on the keys. Now doing it like this will take a little extra practice to get the feeling right, but it offers you much more control over both the volume and steadiness of your playing, and this is really going to be key. Okay, we're almost there, but really quickly let's spare a word for the right hand. Here at the beginning, we're also nicely locked into the C position. Um, it's one nice and easy thing about this piece. We have very few position changes, and the ones we do have are very clear. For example, um, while in this first system, the right hand is all in one position, if we go down to the second system, you can see that we do have a bit of a shift down, but it's very cleanly taken care of with a very normal feeling cross, down with three, down to one, and then um, back up to the C position with three. So let me play the right hand by itself from the beginning. Watch for the clear movement in that spot. Now, let me play those two systems again for you, um, this time with both hands, and I really want you to think about what you're hearing in terms of the relationship between the two parts. Can you hear how clean and clear and present the melody is over all of these notes happening in the left hand? Now let me play a different version of the same thing, see if you can tell the difference. Thanks for watching this lesson from Liberty Park Music. If you enjoyed this lesson and learned something from it, do us a favor, hit that like button. And if you really liked it, share it around. Let your friends and family check it out too. If you want to find more lessons like this or explore other piano-related topics, please come visit us at libertyparkmusic.com. We have full piano courses ranging from beginner to more advanced levels, and everything is online and streaming 24-7 so that you can design your music learning around your schedule and learn in the comfort of your own home from a talented roster of professional teachers and musicians. Come check us out.